Hello everyone, welcome back to the Lit Center channel. My name is Finn and today's video is all about the ancient Greek literature. The Greek civilization, or Hellas as the Greeks called it, is often pinpointed as the beginning of European history and most of you are probably to some degree familiar with the stories concerning gods like Zeus, Poseidon or Hades. And hopefully you have also heard of names like Homer, Achilles, Odysseus and Helen. Well, in today's video we will take a closer look at these figures and we will also discover why Greece is often labelled as the cradle of Europe and the whole western world. Quick disclaimer before we begin though, this video only contains ancient Greek literature, that is, stories, myths and poems that were produced ranging from the early Bronze Age up until the fall of the Western Roman Empire. Ancient Greek literature was written in the ancient Greek language. This language was by no means unified and there existed many different dialects all across the eastern part of the Mediterranean. The main dialect groups are the Attic, the Ionic, the Aeolic and the Doric, many of them with several subdivisions. So from the beginning, Greek writers were not only Greeks living in Greece proper, but also those who resided in Asia Minor or Magna Graecia. The history of Greece is long and complex. From around 3000 BC, the Indo-European Greeks started arriving at the southern tip of the Balkan Peninsula. But they did not come as a unified folk, rather they arrived in independent groups and in different time periods. So there is certainly no way that they saw themselves as one country, rather as a separate group of people who just happened to speak the same language, had the same gods and a somewhat similar way of life. During the Bronze Age, the Greeks established some flourishing cultures like the Minoans on the island of Crete and the Mycenaeans who inhabited the southern mainland. The latter also provided us with the most ancient attestation of the Greek language, dating all the way back to 1500 BC. A few clay tablets discussing the import and export of goods have survived and schoolers have been able to decipher the hieroglyphic-like characters. The even older inscriptions in the Minoan language, however, remain undeciphered to this day. Unfortunately, these early civilizations vanished in the late Bronze Age and very little is known about Greece in the following centuries. Hence, schoolers have classified this period as the Dark Age. There is disagreement between schoolers whether the demise of the pre-classical cultures is due to the so-called Dorian invasion. The Dorians are yet another Greek-speaking group who allegedly invaded Mycenae thereby destroying the society. But I will set this debate aside for now. All we do know is that after the Dark Ages, somewhere around 750 BC, the old writing system had been abandoned and people had started using an adapted version of the Phoenician alphabet, which would later become the standard Greek alphabet. From the midst of the Dark Ages, the monumental figure Homer arose. He is credited with the creation of the Iliad and the Odyssey, widely regarded as the very foundations of Western literature. But it is certain that the roots of these stories reaches back centuries before Homer's time. Homer himself is shrouded in mystery and schoolers are even doubting his mere existence. Basically nothing is known about him, except that he lived sometime around 750 BC. This didn't stop ancient schoolers though from writing dubious so-called biographies of Homer and these biographies always include him being blind and being born on the island of Chios. If you are interested in Homer and his works, I have two entire videos dedicated to the Iliad and the Odyssey, which you can watch on the channel. Another great poet of the pre-classical period was Hesiod. Unlike Homer, Hesiod refers to himself in his poetry. Nonetheless, nothing is known about him from any external source. Hesiod's two extant poems are Works and Days and Theogony. Works and Days is a faithful depiction of the poverty-stricken country life he knew so well and it sets forth principles and rules for farmers. Theogony is a systematic account of creation and the gods. It vividly describes the ages of mankind, beginning with a long past golden age. The writings of Homer and Hesiod were held in extremely high regard throughout antiquity and many schoolers viewed them as the foundational texts behind the ancient Greek religion. Homer told the story of a heroic past which Hesiod bracketed with the creation narrative and an account of the practical realities of contemporary daily life. Lyric poetry received its name from the fact that it was originally sung by individuals or a chorus accompanied by the instrument called the lyre. Of all the lyric poets, Sappho of Lesbos was by far the most widely revered. 
In antiquity, her poems were regarded with the same degree of respect as the poems of Homer. Only one of her poems, Ode to Aphrodite, has survived to the present day in its original form. All fully surviving Greek tragedies are conventionally attributed to the big three, Aeschylus, Sophocles and Euripides. There are seven surviving tragedies attributed to Aeschylus. Three of these plays, Agamemnon, The Libitation Bearers and The Humanites, form a trilogy known as the Oresteia. Seven works of Sophocles have survived, the most acclaimed of which are the three Theban plays, which center around the story of Oedipus and his offspring. The Theban trilogy consists of Oedipus the King, Oedipus at Colonus, and Antigone. There are 19 surviving plays attributed to Euripides. The most well-known of these plays are Medea, Hippolytus, and Bacchae. Two notable historians who lived during the classical era were Herodotus of Halicarnassus. His book The Histories is among the oldest works of prose writing and accounts the knowledge he acquired during his many travels through the ancient world. Thales, Anaximander, Anaximenes, Pythagoras, Empedocles, Heraclitus, Democritus, literally entire university semesters could be devoted to the philosophy of these men, but we must bypass them, unfortunately, because time is not on my side. Of all the classical philosophers, however, Socrates, Plato and Aristotle are generally considered to be the most important and influential. Aristotle did not write any works himself, and scholars now debate whether or not Plato's portrayal of him is accurate. Scholars have argued that Plato's representation of Socrates is merely a fictional representation to expound Plato's own opinions. Plato wrote in dialogues, that is, written works describing conversations between different individuals. He wrote many different works, the most famous of which is probably The Republic, which is basically a long dialogue describing the ideal government. Aristotle of Stagira is widely considered to be one of the most important and influential philosophical thinkers of all time. The first sentence of his metaphysics reads, All men by nature desire to know. He has therefore been called the father of those who know. His medieval disciple Thomas Aquinas referred to him simply as the philosopher. Aristotle was a student at Plato's academy and like his teacher he wrote dialogues or conversations. However, none of these exist today. The body of writings that have come down to the present day probably represent lectures that he delivered at his own school in Athens, the Lyceum. Even from these books, the enormous range of his interests is evident. He explored matters other than those that are today considered philosophical. The extant treatises cover logic, the physical and biological sciences, ethics, politics and constitutional government. By 3038 BC, all the great Greek city-states except Sparta had been united by Philip II of Macedon. Philip's son, Alexander the Great, greatly expanded his father's conquest and Athens lost its preeminent status as a leader of Greek culture. It was temporarily replaced by Alexandria in Egypt. The city of Alexandria in northern Egypt became from the 3rd century BC the outstanding center of Greek culture. It also soon attracted a large Jewish population, making it the largest center for Jewish scholarship in the ancient world. The Septuagint, a Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible was reputed to have been initiated in Alexandria. Alexandria also had an enormous library, which at its peak contained more than 5,000 volumes. It was intended as a repository for every work of classical Greek that could be found. But sadly, great parts of the library have been burned down and some priceless manuscripts lost forever. The Alexandrian poet Apollonius of Rhodes wrote a celebrated poem, the Argonautica, which recounts the story of Jason and his companions in their quest for the Golden Fleece. Aristotenes of Alexandria is credited with being the first person to measure the Earth's circumference. Much that was written by the mathematicians Euclid and Archimedes has been preserved. Euclid is known for his elements. The Elements is a treatise on geometry and it has exerted a continuing influence on mathematics. From Archimedes, several treatises have come down to the present. Among them are measurements of the circle, in which he wrote out the value of pi. For decades, Rome had steadily been conquering parts of Greece, and the definite Roman occupation of the Greek world was established after the Battle of Actium in 31 BC. 
in which Augustus defeated Cleopatra, the Ptolemaic queen of Egypt, and the commander Marcus Antonius, who for some reason in English is known as Mark Antony. So the Greek world was engulfed in the Roman Empire, but that did not mean at all that no more Greek literature was produced. On the contrary, Romans looked up to the Greek culture and they desired to imitate Greek literary models and adapt them to suit Roman use. Many prominent and influential works have been written under Roman control. The physicians Galenus or Galen was a careful student of anatomy and his works exerted a powerful influence on medicine for the next 1400 years. The scientists of the Roman period who had the greatest influence on later generations was undoubtedly the astronomer Ptolemy. He lived during the 2nd century AD, though little is known about his life. It was Ptolemy who devised a detailed description of an Earth-centered universe, a notion that dominated astronomical thinking for more than 1300 years. The Ptolemaic view of the universe endured until Copernicus, Galileo, Kepler and other early modern astronomers replaced it with heliocentrism. After the fall of the Western Roman Empire in 476, the Greek language would continue to be used mainly in Byzantium by Christian schoolers. But that history goes beyond the scope of this video. I know there are so many more writers, thinkers, poets and scientists that deserve to be mentioned. But it's impossible to cover everything in such little time. I did my best to devise a clear overview of Greek literature, as well as offer you some deeper insight in the Greek history in general. So that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it. As always, leave a comment if you know something interesting about this subject, and I will see you in a future video.